I'd like to take a moment and talk to you about what the Bible says about going to heaven. A lot of people think they had to be a good person, live a good life, or maybe keep the sacraments in order to go to heaven. But the Bible actually doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that going to heaven is based off placing your faith on Jesus Christ alone to save you. But there's a few things we've got to understand. We've got to understand why we need to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible reads, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So God, who's perfect and holy, is looking down on us and telling us that none of us are righteous. No one's perfect. We all have our faults. And God tells us why we're not perfect. In verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So sinning is transgression of God's law or breaking a commandment. And the Bible teaches that we all have sinned and because we sin, the standard that God has for us, we just fall short. Now, a common sin among all of us is lying. One of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not bear false witness. God tells us not to lie, so when we go against that and tell a lie, that's an example of committing sin. And I'm just using that as an example to show that it's our own actions that cause us to be sinners. But if we're honest with ourselves, We've all done far worse things in our life than tell a lie. And the reason it's important to realize that we all have committed sin is because of Romans 6, 23, the Bible reads, For the wages of sin is death. Now, a wage is something you earn, a payment. When you go to work, you earn a wage of money. But when you, when you sin, what you earn or deserve is death. And everybody knows about our physical death. We're all just passing through here on this earth. But when the Bible's talking about death, it's talking about there being a second spiritual death. In Revelation 21.8, the Bible reads, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, there's a lot of really bad sins listed there, but at the end of the list, God put and all liars. God put a sin that we all have committed, and he did that to try to get us to understand that no matter how good we think we are, we're just not good enough. And what we deserve is to have our place in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone. We call that place hell. And even though we deserve it, we don't have to go there. In fact, God is not willing that any should perish. So he made a way for us to go to heaven. In Romans 5.8, the Bible reads, But God commended his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And what that's talking about is a little over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to this world. The Bible teaches that he was born of a virgin, and he was God manifested in flesh. He was fully God, but he was in form of a man. The Bible says that he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So any temptation you've ever experienced, past, present, or future, or any temptation I've ever experienced, Jesus Christ experienced that temptation himself. But the big difference between us and Jesus Christ is he didn't succumb to that temptation. He lived a sinless life. He lived a life that neither you or I could live. When he was 30 years old, he started his ministry, and he performed many miracles proving he was God, proving his deity, and perhaps he heard of some of them. He walked on water turned water into wine, healed the sick, made the blind see, cast out devils. And another thing he did was he preached the truth. And just like today, back then, people didn't like hearing the truth. They didn't like hearing that they were sinners in need of a Savior. So they ended up falsely accusing the Lord. They threw him in jail, spit in his face, pulled the hairs out of his beard, whipped him, and they put him up on the cross of Calvary to be crucified. Now when Jesus Christ was up on that cross, he didn't have any sins to die for. But what the Bible teaches is that he bared the sins of the whole entire world. So any sin you ever committed, past, present, or future, or any sin I ever committed, Jesus Christ bared those sins in his own body. He died, his body was placed in the sepulcher, his soul went down to hell, and three days later, he rose again. Now, just because Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole entire world, it doesn't mean that everyone automatically gets to go to heaven. There is one thing we must do in order to be saved. And that question, what must I do to be saved, 
is asked through the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 16, verse 30. And in verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So it doesn't say you had to live a good life, be baptized, or follow the sacraments. The only thing it says you must do in order to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.16, probably the most well-known verse in the whole entire Bible, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 6.23, I read you the first part of the verse earlier, For the wages of sin is death. The second part of the verse says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, going to heaven is not a reward. It's not a wage. It is a gift of God. And you can't work for a gift, or you can't possibly earn a gift. In Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, the Bible reads, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the reason we can't possibly work for this gift is because it's already been paid through Jesus Christ. Now the thing about this gift is it's eternal life. John 3.16 calls it everlasting life. It's life that lasts forever. So once you receive this gift, you have everlasting life. And if you could lose this gift or lose your salvation, it wouldn't be eternal. And Titus 1.2 reads, But in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. So once you receive this gift of eternal life, you aren't good enough to deserve it to begin with. And you can not possibly be good enough to keep it. But thankfully, you don't have to because you received it as a gift. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you get to live on this life as some sort of immortal. We all reap what we sow on this earth. And if you get into grievous sins on this earth, God will chastise you. And you will pay for that sin here on this earth. But when it comes to going to heaven, that's guaranteed because God promised you eternal life. And when you physically die, you will not experience the second death. You will go up to live with God forever in heaven. Now, God wants you to receive this gift. In Romans 10, verse 9 through 10, God tells us how we receive this gift. The Bible reads, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth on the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you believe what the Bible says, that we're all sinners, and that that sin makes us deserve or has condemned us to hell, but Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, and if you place your faith on Jesus Christ alone to save you, he would and give you everlasting life. And once you receive that gift of everlasting life, there's nothing you can possibly do to lose it. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I would like to, if you believe that, I would like to help you word a prayer, just telling Jesus that you're placing your faith on him to save you. Now the prayer in and of itself doesn't save you. It's the belief in thy heart. But if you believe it, you shall confess it. So you can just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. But I believe you died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Will you please save me and give me the gift of everlasting life? I'm placing my faith solely on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you believe that and prayed that prayer, I would like to congratulate you on receiving the gift of eternal life. You know, John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Once you accept Christ as your Savior, you become a born-again child of God. Welcome to the family. It's been a real blessing in my life, and that's why I just wanted to take the time to share with you what the Bible says about salvation. God bless.